Well, hey there, how you doing today? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me, appreciate it. I uh, did a little video a couple weeks ago. It was about the difference between a man-made field pattern that I had found in the Western United States and comparing that to what crop circles look like and the differences, you know, between the symmetries of just man-made field pattern and the rotational symmetries of crop circles and what we were talking about anisotropy, the way in a crop circle, all of the stalks of wheat in a wheat crop formation point in the same direction, why that matters energetically to the crop circle. And I mentioned that some of the ones that we had actually made as man-made experiments had also created the same weird energetic effects. Uh, and I wanted to talk about one of those particular experiments. It was the uh, mass matrix formation, as we called it, from 2006. And this idea came from a guy named Scott Flansberg, who you may be familiar with. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for being able to add more numbers in his head without a calculator than anyone else on the planet, being able to add the most numbers. Or is it able to calculate the largest numbers without a calculator? He's called the human calculator. He's been on different TV shows, Oprah and so forth. And he approached us with this idea of making a mathematically based crop formation that was based around the number nine, since he uses base nine instead of base 10 to do his human calculations in his mind. And so we created this idea of a circular formation with a matrix of numbers in the middle uh, around a grid going from one to nine on the rows and the columns. And it became the math matrix formation. Uh, in order to do this formation, we uh, had to locate a farmer and uh, we found Tim Carson over in the UK and he had fields available at Woodboro Hill. Now Woodboro Hill has been the site of many interesting formations over the years. And we've had a lot of interesting experiences there. Uh, including a group meditation once where a ball of light appeared to show up. Uh, it, it looked like it showed up over the East Field, according to a German tourist who was taking a photo of that hill at the time we were doing the meditation. And uh, that was kind of an interesting experience. It's kind of typifies a sort of strange electromagnetic and luminous anomalous phenomena that show up in that area known as the East Field. It's where some of the biggest formations have shown up over the years. And we chose to do our math matrix formation right there at Woodboro Hill. Uh, and I did this formation with uh, someone who you might be familiar with, Peter Sorensen, who's a graphic artist and crop circle researcher and so forth. And he, uh, we looked to find some other people that could help us, and we located two really expert circle makers. These were people that had been involved with making man-made circles. They were not known publicly uh, at the time, but we knew them to be people that were quite capable and competent of making very precise and good-looking crop circles. So we used two uh, circle makers to help us. So it was really basically a team of four of us. And uh, this is what the design originally looked like. It was going to be a much bigger formation as it often turns out when you plan something, it might be bigger in your imagination than you can actually physically do. But it kind of looked sort of like that in some ways at the end. It did have the math matrix uh, in the center of it, but it had nine circles going around it instead of these spiral arms going out. Now, it took us about a week in the daytime to make this formation a couple hours at a time. And so it was kind of a big project. It took a while to do. Now, the interesting thing about it is when we were done with it, we put up signs saying that we had made this for the human calculator, Scott Flansburg, and this was a paid project. The farmer had been paid, everything was legit. And yet a lot of people still didn't believe we had made it, perhaps because some of the swirls in the circles on the outside just look too precise or the number pattern. I don't know. So some people insisted it was made 
by ETs. Even our sign was defaced and someone wrote across it, liar, and said, you couldn't have made that. We were in the formation at one point, and I remember people came up to me and said, uh, well, if you made this, how do you explain these very interesting bends on the wheat? It's just sort of bending at the nodes. And and I said, I am not. I don't know. <laughs> you know. I can't explain everything that nature does. And they turned to each other and said, see, he didn't really make it. <laughs> so there are people that will be hold to their beliefs, no matter what the evidence is. And we had all the photos of us making it and so forth. Uh, even some good aerial shots. Uh, taken with a pole. This is in the days before drones. So we used to use these tall poles and stuff to take pictures. And um, people will hold to their beliefs, even if there's evidence showing to the contrary. It's like Stanton Friedman, the UFO researcher used to say, my mind is made up, don't disturb me with the facts. And we found that in this case, we did have a couple electromagnetic anomalies happen in, around, in and around the formation uh, after it was there. I um, mean, one of them was a case where some folks approached and came up and their video camera stopped working just as they approached the formation and they couldn't get it working again for the rest of the summer. They did write me later that they think that it may have been caused by a defect in the camera. So maybe that has an explanation. Hard to say, but that sort of thing has happened a lot, even around man-made formations. Uh, and then a really interesting case is when a colleague of ours, uh, Ron Russell, the guy that introduced me to crop circles in 1997, has taken my RV classes and so forth, had really good results. Uh, Ron had scheduled a micro light, one of these really small little flexible winged or fixed winged, but small engined aircraft that... Uh, not technically an airplane, it's kind of like a flying lawnmower. Some of them do have fabric wings. And we had scheduled one of these to take pictures of the Math Matrix formation. And Ron took up my Olympus uh, camera. It, it was an electronic camera, but was this is the early days of electronic cameras still. Uh, this is before cell phone cameras were really good. So... Uh, this was, I forget the type of Olympus, but this was sort of the standard model Olympus uh, electronic camera that used a little card to store the information, store the photos. And uh, so it was partly mechanical. It actually had a lens that went in and out and it had real switches and stuff, but it was taking the photos to a flash card rather than film. Now, when Ron was flying over the math matrix, formation at the legal limit of 500 feet. You can't go below 500 feet in the UK to fly uh, planes or micro lights or probably even drones as far as I know. He was at that legal limit of 500 feet over the formation. All of a sudden, my camera stopped working and he had been taking pictures up to that point, but at the formation, it stopped and he couldn't get it going again. So he took the rest of the photos with his own camera. Now, when he came back from the flight and he showed me the camera, it was one of the strangest things I've seen. I still remember it. I wish I could have taken a picture of it, but uh, the camera wasn't working and your camera take, can't take a picture of itself. Anyway, um, in the display, there were some numbers and what appeared to be letters, but malformed. And I thought, well, maybe this is an error message and the camera is telling me that something's wrong because even if you turned it off and on, it wouldn't work anymore. Uh, I looked up what the closest approximation of those numbers and letters would have been for an error code, and it wasn't in the booklet. It wasn't an error code. It was just a completely malfunctioning display. In order to get the camera working again, I had to take the batteries out, leave it out for about five or 10 minutes, if I remember correctly, and put the batteries back in, and then it worked again. So it was a serious sort of critical fatal error in that electronic device from being in the proximity, perhaps, of a crop formation. Now, again, this is something I've seen many times in many formations, going back to the Devil's Den formation, so-called, in Fifield Down in 1999, which I've made some videos about, and many other formations where people's cameras, camcorders, laptops, and things have just stopped working inside a crop circle. And here we had it happen over the crop circle at a distance of 500 feet. Uh, I've had my camera stopped working 
at distances that perhaps as far as a quarter mile from a crop circle. So are the crop circles emitting a type of energy, perhaps as we've mentioned recently, a type of strange radiation or something like that that is not easy to measure, but the electronics can pick it up and it kind of scrambles them. It doesn't just seem to be an effect where you're actually in the circle physically touching it. I've seen that happen. You know, you're walking in it. It seems to happen around the crop circle for a distance. And what is it about the crop circle that creates a different pattern or frequency of energy, perhaps particles, uh, as I've called them recently, since I study many worlds, parallel realities, maybe they're many on particles, <laughs> as I've called them in the past. Perhaps the, the circle emits these many ons. I don't know. It's an interesting question. We saw something like that happen in the math matrix formation. I think it's interesting, and I just thought you'd enjoy hearing about that. So let me know your comments in the box below. I'm always interested to hear what you have to think. Now, if you've enjoyed hearing about this story of the mathematical matrix of 2006 crop formation, uh, just go to my website, cropcirclescience.com. CropCircleScience.com, I've got a lot of other photos and videos of other really strange occurrences that we've seen in man-made formations and in other types of formations where the camera stopped working, the batteries, cameras, and that sort of thing. I think you'll really enjoy it, so take a look at that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care for now, and bye.